Good evening to Standard Bearer, New York. This is our snack and study Bible study tonight. So I just want to welcome you, um, those of you for the first time and those of you who have been following us for the last, it's been Bible study has been going on for about three weeks online. We're on Facebook Live and we're on Instagram Live and it's a very informal setting. Tonight we're doing snack and study. So I hope you have your hat on or at least have your hat by you or have your cap on and get your snack. So we have all types of snacks set up here tonight, but before we get started, let's just open up in prayer. So Father God, we just thank you. We just praise you for this time where we could sit and snack and study and read your word, God. We thank you for each and every, each and every participant. We thank you that we speak blessings over their lives, healing over their lives, touch each and every person that is grieving or bereaved at this time. And Father, continue to cover us and protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So good evening. Do you have your snack? If you have your snack, one of the things that we do at SBNY, you could take a picture of your snack and put it in the comments in the Bible study. You could take a picture of your hat. You could take a picture of your hat and put that in the comments in our Bible study as well. So I just want to welcome you. I'm trying to figure out, I put a, several snacks out in front tonight. Um, because I was not sure if you were going to eat a healthy snack or just a different kind of snack. So I have my pirate booty. These are some of my favorite snacks. So we have pirate booty, I have a banana, I have my granola bar. For those of you, I love plantain chips. And then I love an avocado as well. Shirley biscuits, for those who are from the Caribbean, got to have a Shirley biscuit in your house. An apple and sun chips garden salsa flavor amen so um tonight um i wanted to talk to you about being covered um so that's one of the things that we are covered by the lord we're covered under the shadow of his wings and that's why we're wearing our hats tonight because sometimes we forget that we're covered amen and if you have a snack, you, you should be excited because guess what? You, he even gave provision for food, which is another type of covering. Amen? So just to update you, um, the SBM website is standardbearerny.org. And all of the sermons and all of the teachings that are being done by Standard Bearer in New York, if it be myself or someone else, it will be loaded on our website. So if you miss anything directly after the teachings or the sermons or any services that we have, uh, you'll find it on our website. Amen? Uh, so tonight you are at Snack Hat Cap Snacks. So it's a Bible study. So relax, you're at home, right? So I'm at home, I have all my sneakers, I have my, I'm at my snack table. Those of you who've been following us for three weeks, I have moved through three different types of tables. So if you could remember in the comments, what was the first table? You could type that in. What was the second table? And tonight is a snack table. Amen? Like one of the things we have to understand is that even as we are uh, studying the word of God, you, you use whatever um, piece of equipment, you use whatever you have. If it's a lap table that you use on your bed, the goal is to get in touch and connect with the word of God. Amen? So covered, I have my laptop over here, so you'll see me turn from side to side. So to be covered, right? What does that mean exactly? And I, I want this to be a bit more engaging tonight because it's going to be, uh, it's a different type of Bible study tonight, I'll just say that. So to be covered, covered means to put something such as a cloth or a lid in order to protect or conceal. Right, so this covering is a protection and a concealing. So I had looked up a, a couple of um, uh, synonyms to the word cover, and I want you, as you think, as I you know, say a couple of these synonyms, I'm not gonna use every single one, but whichever one touches your heart, type that in the comments as well, is what that, what um, your connection with the Lord, amen? So this covering means capped, it means closed, uh, it means concealed, uh, hidden is another synonym, uh, protected is another one, uh, shielded. So if any of those words, um, you know, jump out to you, type it in. 
wrapped. Do you feel wrapped by the Lord in this season? Uh, some of us, do you feel bound? Because covered means bound, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this is not extended to April 29th. Like, come on already. I thought we were out the door at uh, April 15th. And now we're like, I'm so covered, I feel bound. So these are all um, synonyms for it. Uh, masked. Oh my gosh, are we masked? We're wearing masks everywhere. So now these covering, these masks that we have to wear. Now we're wearing a, a mask uh, outside in New York City. Because for those who aren't in New York City, they, they recommended that we wear masks. So now we're wearing masks. We're wearing bandanas. We look like Valero. I got my mask sometimes. I got to... We have to do a lot to um, stay covered. So the scripture I'm coming from tonight is John chapter 5, verses 30. I'm reading from the Amplified. Uh, and it says, I can do nothing on my own initiative or authority. Just as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just fair, righteous, unbiased, because I do not seek my own will, but only the will of him who sent me. So at this time, um, this particular scripture uh, says a lot tonight. But I just want to give you a little bit of um, the backdrop with it. It says, let me just share this with you. Jesus had just healed a man who had been physically disabled for 38 years. But because this wonderful miracle was carried out on the Sabbath day, the Jews sought to destroy him. So they considered this healing as work, which they considered broke the law of the Sabbath, which is you're supposed to be resting, shouldn't be doing anything. But far from breaking God's Sabbath law, Christ was faithfully carrying out the work and the will of the Father. For Christ only said and did those things that he heard from his Father in heaven. So what is that? Are you doing things that only the Father in heaven is saying? Or are we still um, taking things in our own hands? Are we really fully covered? Or is it because now that we feel bound in our houses that things are becoming uncovered? And in that uncovering, are we willing to make the adjustments and things that are needed to move forward, right? So it says, I can do nothing on my own initiative. Jesus informed them that for he was living his life as God created man to live in total dependence. So the goal is we have to have total dependence on the Lord in every situation and area of our life, in our finances, in our relationships, with our children, with our, our jobs, with our spouses, um, with our finances, with our community. We have to rely totally on the Lord to make the adjustments. Amen. So, it goes on to say, it was God's will that this man should be healed on the Sabbath day. And what is a man that they should argue? With? Who are we to argue with God on how things are supposed to be? Some of us are so frustrated right now. Lord, yes, you covered me. But even in this covering, I'm saying to you, I want to go outside. So today I was able to go out uh uh, I went out early to just pick up a few things once again and just get right back in because we still have to obey the laws of the land. Amen. I, I went out. I had my mask. I, I took gloves because the thing is we have to want to protect one another. Um, I am praying that we become a community again. Like I'm, I'm praying, come unity. Just unity has to come amongst us that we can just get on all on one page and protect each other. So... This covering, I had the, the strangest thing. Um, did, get your snack though. Like, what should, I'm, what should I eat? You should write in the comments, what should I eat? The camera crew will tell me what I'm supposed to eat. But tell me, what, should I have my pirate booty? I don't want any of the fruit. It's too messy. It's got to be something dry. So, well, my granola bar. I think maybe the granola bar. Because we want to teach healthy snacks and healthy living. Right? Should I? Can I have the granola bar? That's what I'm having. I think that's only fair. And you should have your snack as well. And always have, have a little bottle of water. Don't get dry. So, this covering. I started a new revolution with myself uh, to, 
today. Today. My banana. Planted chips. Everybody else have planted chips? Okay. Here I am. Planted chips it is. Who am I? I'm having planted chips. Now y'all gotta help me open the bag. Do y'all know what this is like to open a planted chips bag? Okay, got it open. Chip. Almost a vegetable, but a little fried. Amen. So here we are. So this covering that we're talking about, this scripture is saying, I can do nothing on my own initiative or authority. So uh, earlier today, I was thinking about like us being in our houses and, and being all covered. And in this covering, it reminded me of how like Noah was stuck in the ark with the, you know, probably the uh, animals, the wife. And now we kind of understand how, how did they stay in there for all those days all together? I thought about Jonah being in the belly of a whale for three days, and we've been in the house more than three days. So one of the things I, I want to encourage you related to this covering that we have is um, don't fight being covered. Don't fight being protected. Don't fight feeling like you're, you're bound up. And one of the battles that we struggle with, which I struggled with, is um, trying to still live the life that I lived that was free inside. It's not the same, y'all. It's just not the same. It's not the same. I'm eating my chip. It's just not. It's not the same. And don't eat with your mouth full. You got to drink something. So, today I did a, a little experiment. I started a new revolution with myself. Because I had some things covered. I was trying to still live like how I was living outside, knowing that I'm still inside. And I'm encouraging you that this living inside, maybe to show you some things that are on the inside of you. I'll say that. So here we are. Here's my nail kit. I've never had a nail kit before in my life. How many of you all used to go to the nail salon? We like manicures, we like pedicures, men and women, because when I go, it's both. And if you like a manicure, you like a pedicure, you miss your manicure, you miss your pedicure, type it in the comments. Oh my gosh, we miss. Lord, please deliver us, because we miss our, you know, having groomed nails and having our pedicure. Anyone, anybody that use gel, I use use gel. So now the gel is growing out. You see it, right? If you need a fill in, but I'm trying to tell you that God is the fill in for tonight. He's gonna fill all of this in. So I brought my nail kit because um, I tried to, you know, reinvent what I used to do outside. You know, you're a pastor, you gotta stay groomed, blah blah, whatever. So today. By the uh, strength of the Holy Spirit, I have started the Naked Nail Revolution. Uncovered nails. Oh my gosh. How could, like, that's like something we just, uh, nails uncovered, uh, painted in clear. Oh my gosh. No acrylic, no glue, just uncovered. Right? Just uncovered. Amen? So here we are. Y'all ready? So I went out with my brilliant self. I got file. What if I'm the local drugstore? I even got these things. These little filey things that they usually do with us. I even got the thing that moves around. Where does it go? Well, here it goes. I think I'm trying to. It even does the thing and I you could buff and I got it all trying to redirect and reconnect with what I was used to having. But the nail salons are closed. So then I went and got my little press on nails, bless the little press on little fella, tried to put him on, fell off, kept, but what am I doing? I'm trying to cover up something that maybe God wants to expose. So why, why are you saying this, Pastor Sonia? Why are you talking about nails? Because listen, what, one of the things that we realize, and I'm going to use it for nails, but we're going to move forward with what, it, what we're really covering. In the process, I've been having manicures, pedicures, and 
for, for we've been having a lot of us been having this for years and our nails have never really been exposed to us and I want to share with you because from my clinical background of being a nurse for like 27 years prior to being a pastor uh your nails when they're uncovered pale nails if your nails are pale and your nail polish is coming off if your nails are pale you could be anemic that's signs of congestive heart failure that could be signs of malnutrition that could be signs of liver disease but think about it all this time we've been covering up everything so everything is covered you've not seen you you've never really looked at your nails so i started to today i started saying you know I really could just really wear my nails just plain. I've, I haven't done it in a while. And and those who know me, I really don't care for manicures that much. I just don't like the time. But I want to be well-groomed, so I do what needs to be done. But in this season of being locked in, this is a time to uncover some things and really look at it and expose it for what it could or could not be. So look at your nails, those of you that your na you can't go to the the nail salon look at your nails white nails if the nails are mostly white and the rims are dark that can be an indication of liver problems such as even hepatitis if your if your fingernails are yellow it could be a jaundice which is more another liver issue blue nails mean you're not getting enough oxygen in your body so one of the things that we used to do in the hospital is that we, as soon as somebody come in, we were taking the nail polish off because we wanted to see their nails because it was an indicator of something. So sometimes we're things that we're covering are the very things that God would like to uncover as we are locked in so we can really see what the issues are. Amen. So let's say amen right there because I did not want to be part of the naked nail revolution, but in this season, while I can be in, I'm going to start to look at things different. I'm going to allow God in this covering to uncover some of the things like the nails, right? Uncover some of the things that we think that um, are hidden. It's time for him. He wants to expose them to us. He wants us to be dependent on him. He doesn't want me to go and just make it all up again and make it look like it's 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 real. I did not go to the nail salon. The press-ons do not stay on. They start flying all over the place. You can flick them off. It's just, it was a painful experience. So I am so happy that I can just be naked. Amen? So, covered. Our God covers us in trust. And the scripture says, it's in Proverbs 3, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. And I'm reading the message. It's saying, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. And that's what I did. I decided, okay, I'm going to try to, you know, I'll, I'll do my own nails. I've never done them. And I, I don't think I'll ever try that again. I just got some clear, cleaned them up and decided I'm going to start my own personal revolution while I'm in the house. Amen? Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. So one of the things that we, in this covering that he wants to do for us, he's not saying, you know, there's still rules and regulations that are going on governmentally, but you're still able to, to move about to some degree. So you just want to check in with the, the Lord and say, is it time for me to go to run? Is it time for me to go to leave? Should I go shopping? Should, you know, should I go to the, the, the supermarket? Is it time to go to Target? Check in with the Lord. This is your time to start to hear his voice. In this covering, this is your time to tune your ears to hear what he is saying to you. Because a lot of the external things that were grabbing at you, some some of us, it was a lot of work. It was our, you know, it was, it was um, I guess, external uh clubs and all these different things everything's kind of shut down now so in this covering in this ceiling in this time when you feel like you and your, your house is your own personal ark this is the time to get in contact with the lord and know that you can trust him you can trust him amen do you trust the lord you can take that in the comments and and you can write i'm learning to trust you more lord even in all of this amen Let's continue. 
So it says here, don't assume that you know it all. And that's one of the things that we, we're now struggling with is that we thought we knew a lot of things. We just took it for granted that we could walk in the supermarket. Now you got to line up. We took it for granted that we could just walk outside and, and just breathe fresh air. Now you got a mask on and now you feel like you got this muzzle. Now you can connect with those dogs that wear the cones around their head or when the, when the uh, people are muzzling the dogs because they could be a little aggressive. It's not a comfortable feeling, right? So we don't know it all, Lord. So we, we surrender to you even now that you are our covering and you are our hope. And we trust you even though we don't understand all that's going on right now. Amen? It says, run to God. We're still in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. And this is the message version. Run to God. This is the time to run to God. As, uh, as we're hearing, um, you know, today was like a... a they're saying where they don't want to say that we have um, hit a plateau. And I agree with that, that as well. But um, they're seeing that some things are leveling off. But this is not the time. I'm saying run to God. Don't run outside. Still continue to, to, um, continue to physically distance yourself. But socially and emotionally connect so via social media, via phone calls, texting. Do whatever you have to do to to stay in a, a, a frame of, um, a stable frame of mind. I'll say that because some people are very lonely in this season, but even when you feel like you're lonely, you can always run to God. One thing about him, he doesn't go to sleep. He doesn't tell you, he'll text you back. He's always available to you. So this is the time that to know that you can be covered in his, and trust him to cover you, that you can reach out to him. Amen. Run from evil. This is one of the things I'm encouraging at, at this time and myself as well is that this is not the time to try to be who I was prior to the lock-in. The goal is to not just sit and focus and just watch TV all day. Or listen, I love to listen to worship music. I could do that all day. But even some of the things that we find that are Christian things to do, is it God to do? Is that the instruction to do? You can, you can overdo things. There is a balance. You can read your word. You can study, you can watch TV, you can exercise, you can eat a healthy snack, you may, you know, you can drink your water. You, there's many things that we are able to do, but, you know, we want to be balanced in this time in our homes uh, as we are, you know, socially distant. I'll say that. Amen. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with, with life. So even in this time, this is, uh, as you trust God. To cover you, we should be exercising. Uh, for the seniors that are in the house, you can walk up and down the hallway in in your where your apartment building. If you 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 know you don't have to go outside, you can walk around your apartment. Uh, a lot of people are online now uh, doing exercise courses on Facebook Live and TV. Uh, join in and do what you can do, but this is not a time to say okay. We're in, I'm just going to sleep, sleep through these next like 20 something days and, and think this was just a really bad dream. No, God is covering us. Amen. But in that covering, there's still a hovering of the Holy Spirit, which is in, instructing us in what to do and what not to do. Amen. So don't forget that your cover does, is hovering over you, but that doesn't mean that we just lay down and we just sleep through this. Amen. So it continues to say, God... Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Your barns will burst. Your wine vats will brim over. But don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under his loving correction. So here we are. Oh, it's so painful, Lord. I mean, oh, I like to be outside. I really do. So uh, the painful sulking, I can, you know, attest to painful sulking because as, as a ministry, you know, at Standard Bearer, we do, uh, we, we're very strong in, in doing outreach and we have this outreach vehicle. And I was really soaking to the Lord, like, I cannot believe we are locked in. These, you know, people outside, we, we usually feed uh, the homeless in different areas. And I was just like, we are locked in and I can't move the car. The car is sitting there. And I was really soaking to the Lord. And Instead of sulking, I started to say, Lord, show me your, your plan. Show me that the thing that I'm concerned about, you're taking care of. 
And then today, I, you know, I'm listening and the mirror speaking. And now they're saying that people anywhere can go into any place and get food at the different schools. They have hours for the children. They have hours for the adults. He says he doesn't want anyone to go hungry. And I, I, I just was so elated because God is concerned about the little things that you're concerned. That was a big thing to me that, you know, the homeless, you know, aren't hungry because now the restaurants are closed. You know, a lot of places aren't letting people in. It's warm now. So they are really on the street more. And it's like the soup kitchen uh, lines along, the pantry lines along. And, and even if they get pantry, where are they really preparing it? A lot of them have kitchens. So these are the things that were concerning me. But I had to learn to trust God. I got to know that there's a covering of trust that he has for us. And I'm speaking that into your life even now. You got to trust God. Trust him in every issue. Trust him with every circumstance. Trust him with your job. Trust him with the recreation of the new you that he's trying to create. As you're in, reevaluate re-instruct yourself, everything's online. Are you gonna constantly hear that in just about everything I share? This is a time to realign and redefine yourself. This is a renewing, this is a refreshing, um, it's a reinventing, it's a redistribution time. The goal is you be refined while you're in, amen? Be refined while you're in. Figure out what God is trying to tell you about you, amen? Um, it says, don't salt under his loving correction. It's the, ch it's the child he loves that God corrects. Can you imagine that those of us who have children that we just let them do whatever they want? No, oh, just do whatever you want and we'll figure out it at the end. It's the one that God loves that he corrects. So don't um, trust that he has you, your mind, he has you on his heart, has you on his mind. Amen. A father's delight is behind all of this. God is so delighted that we are in his life. He wants to keep us covered. He wants us protected. He wants us shielded. He, he wants to be our refuge. He wants to be our strength. We have to trust that he loves us with an unfailing love. We have to know that he's, we're covered under the shadow of his wings. We have to know that he's a provider. We have to know that he's a comforter. We know he's a healer. You got to know you're covered in his love. And some people don't feel love. Some people feel alone in this time. Uh, you know, I'm concerned about the, the the seniors because sometimes, you know, this a whole world just transitioned into like uh, the Jetsons, I call it. Everything went online and maybe they weren't ready for it. And my concern is, is that, you know, I'm praying that we would reach out and check on a senior because they may not be, you know, they would be the in food insecure. And we have to cover one another. You have to, you know, love your neighbors as you love yourself. So even as God is covering us, we have to want to cover others. Amen. Just like a, a chicken likes to cover her little, her little chicks, that's what God is looking for. He's looking for a community to come back together, for people to love each other again, to care about each other, and not just me, myself, and I, no longer a selfie, but a hussy. So I want to end with this scripture. As I'm closing out, um, I want to end with two scriptures. Uh, I want you to know you're covered in his strength. And that's Philippians 4.13. And it says, I can do all things which he has called me to do. And I'm reading Amplified. Through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. And that's my prayer for you tonight, that you'll have an inner strength and a confident peace. Know that um, God is with you. He's for you. He's strengthening you even at this time. Even those that are unemployed, I'm praying for those to, to get through on the line to even get their unemployment benefits because that's a challenge at this time. So I'm, I'm praying that God strengthen you as you persevere to move forward, even in those things. Amen. I'm praying for those to be strengthened that lost their loved ones and, and, and were disconnected and it just happened so abruptly. I'm praying for that inner peace that God gives that he will be able to strengthen and keep you. Amen. I want you to know that you're covered in his love. 
Psalms 5.12 in NLT says, For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. And you need that love. You want that love. There's a love that God gives that never leaves and it never forsakes you. And he wants, to, he wants to make that available to you tonight. So, Father, I pray even now that each and every person that watches this, uh, that is on live even now, and those who are going to watch it later or even go on our website, that they will feel your love. They will feel your peace. They will feel your understanding. They will be increased in courage. So, Father, I just want to give you honor and glory tonight for all you're doing. Bless each and every one of you. And I, I want to shout out to my camera crew, you know, Deacon Drew and my stylist, Sister Amisha, who makes sure she keeps me on point that, um, you know, God is for us. I want you to feel covered tonight in his love. So, Father God, I thank you for your covering. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that's hovering. Even as we look at those of you who look at the plane, know that that's like the Holy Spirit just hovering over you. And your future is warm and it is bright. So just continue to walk in expectation, knowing that God loves you with an unfailing love and blessings to you all. So um, that is the end of our Tuesday night teaching. On um, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Standard Bear in New York, we'll be having our pace setters intergenerational prayer call, which is a call that is connecting both generations. It's age wisdom with the energy of youth. So it's adults and young adults praying together. And this Friday, because it's God's Friday, um, we're celebrating, we're doing uh, at 9 p.m. We'll be doing uh, praise, worship, and a, a simple sermonette. And then we'll uh, continue our Saturday night live service on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. So God bless you all and thank you for um, joining in with us. He's an awesome guy. God bless you and good night.